Hi everybody, it's Elise Murray here, hanging out with my dear friend, I would say best friend actually, Stacy, and we're hanging out talking about all kinds of stuff, the garden and entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and her launching her new career in HR and the state of affairs this spring of 2021. Yes. And where we all are out here hanging out in the great state of Texas and the, after the great freeze that we had in Texas and all of that too. So no, we are enjoying an afternoon being girls together and we enjoy, uh, we invite you to be a part of the conversation. So I want to thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. So I posed a question to you earlier because uh, I feel also in HR, it's it, mental health. So what do you do for you to take time and stress away from all of the things that you do? Because you have so many avenues in your life that uh, keep you busy, mm -hmm. can be stressful. Mm -hmm. Not just the wife and the mother, but the entrepreneur as well. Right. And what do you do? Now, sometimes people say, well, I take uh, meditation or yoga or walks or and so forth but since you have so many stressors is there anything that in your life that helps you decompress that de-stress and works for you and sometimes you can find better ideas because you've you've taken that moment for yourself mm -hmm. to de-stress to then now that's off your shoulders mm -hmm. that you can then think about I can do this or now I work this out that way mm -hmm. and so forth do you have that is it is there something that you do or someone sometimes it's a phone call you have that phone a friend you know yeah you, you call well your... you're one of those people too I mean I bounce ideas off of you mm -hmm. a lot and um, and of course we've got the clubhouse now which is great because yes. I've got mm -hmm. that set up and for those of you that don't know about that just DM me and or her because Stacy's on there I got her on there um, but I think that a lot of it I mean, it used to be, it's interesting that you've asked me this today because I've made the decision like within the last mm -hmm. 72 hours to convert the presentation room from a presentation room into my painting studio. And painting is where I began. Like I was an art student at St. Mary's. I mm -hmm. was the senior artist there. I got the scholarship to SCAD in fine art painting. And when Brian and I were first married, I was painting a lot because I was a student in college with a painting mm -hmm. major. And... I, that was when that was where I would be completely zoned in in my thing, kind of like Brian is when he's writing music or composing, or mm -hmm. James with the drums, um, and a lot of artists. That's the case. And then, and when I became a photographer, it was never about that. It was about the connection with the baby. And you're a client of mine for that too. So it's a connection thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a go into yourself and think about the world and then come out more refreshed or revitalized kind of thing. But with COVID. The garden was a lot of it, right? Because mm -hmm. I was planting, but even then I had pressure on myself to do specific things in the garden with specific eggs in the hole with the tomatoes, yes. which we've talked about yes, a lot off a camera. Tip. Yeah. <laughs> and we can talk about that today too. I know that you mentioned that you wanted to, and we'll talk about the garden. A lot of people that watch me are watching the garden part mm -hmm. of, the, of the channel and are interested in that, especially now it's spring. And everybody's wanting to plant things in the garden, what to plant, when to plant it, what to plant with it, and what not to plant with it. And we can do that in a minute. But I think that for me, um, this past year has been really being able to walk away from the money making and be able, because that's such a drive for me. Like there's, mm -hmm. that's the, there's a drive there. It's not that I have to make the money because I've got the real estate and I've got other ways that make, make money, but I have a drive to make money. Like mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm human if I'm not making money. Does that make sense? It's, it's part of your DNA. Yeah. And so when that was kind of extracted out of the puzzle, I'm not making any money in the garden, but I converted it into a pressure to get this done in the garden and get that done in the garden and plant this and force this to grow and watch this grow. And if there's a problem, find the problem, solve the problem, fix the problem, make the problem. You know what I mean? But that was just key what you just said, to make it grow. So instead of making the money grow, you're now making yeah. the garden grow. Yeah. Because you, you because of COVID, the photography business yeah. is down. But you found an avenue to make something else grow. Right. And you found a way to do it. So it actually is very, very similar. You pivoted from one aspect of your life that you that we just said is part of your DNA. You have this drive mm -hmm. and you aimed it now, channeled it to the garden. Yeah. yeah. So that's a that's a really good 
you know, people take years of therapy <laughs> to come up with to that. To come up with that, and you did it all on your own. Well, and the other you know, thing is, the, the, the you same channel thing. it. You want to channel, you know, parts of you into another aspect, but people don't find it easy. They need soul searching, or they need ideas and so forth. And for you, it was a natural. I'm taking this, and I'm gonna channel it this way and I'm going to put my love and attention and my my drive into this mm -hmm. and I'm making it grow and wait I know what I'm doing and it is growing and I have tips so <laughs> Just, here's a channel so here's a channel I'm gonna make it grow <laughs> I'm gonna make it grow yeah I am making things grow that's basically the bottom line <laughs> of it whether it be the money or the dollars or that's, just, that's a tagline right yeah making things grow I just, I mean, and the thing too is it came to the realization that, you know, I'm 51 now this year, like 51. I, I did not receive it because last year, you know, I was in bed from the heart stuff. And then this year we had broken mm -hmm. pipes all over the house. And so I, I'm not really fully vetted that I'm 51 yet. I mean, I'm, I am biologically, chronologically, whatever, but I've mm -hmm. not had the opportunity to really celebrate that the way that I would. And I felt like I was set back a little bit because of the situations that we've all had to go through with the pandemic. There's a certain place I wanted to be at 50. You know, I wanted to be worth a couple million dollars. I wanted to have, you know, my name in the community. Mm -hmm. There were certain bars that I'd set for myself that I had, some of, many of them I have achieved. Some of them have not been able to be given attention because I was busy making money, right? Mm -hmm. Busy making the money. And so now what I'm finding is I'm wanting to spend time when I normally would be in Mexico, okay, on yeah. a beach, which is my favorite, that's my space for mm -hmm. that whole soul thing. Normally I'd be in the ocean with the fish and all these crazy ideas. Oftentimes the full columns for the year would appear. I could just be under the water and I would go, okay, January is going to look like this and February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, okay, October, November, and then of course, December. And I would have it all come together and then I would just jot it all down. I wouldn't write it there, but I'd jot it all down. And that's how I came up with Aristotle's 12 virtues during the COVID 2020. Never, I mean, that was mm -hmm. the decision that was made in the fall in the ocean that I would be reflecting on my 50 years of life through Aristotle's virtues for the whole year of 2020, not knowing anything obviously about what we would all be going through, but how poignant mm -hmm. to have that as selected for what I actually wrote. And, and, and it just, it's like there's a space that I get into that things just fall into place. And it's hard to do that here because this room is now and was retouching photos. Now it's martini talks. That room is, presentation the studio is the studio the mm -hmm. garden is now the set yeah <laughs> what i've created i've turned it into <laughs> that it into set it. the kitchen is the set right mm -hmm. so every room in my house used to be i could just shut the door you would come see me for pictures and i would do the pictures and we'd go to the presentation room and then at the end of the day i would shut the door and then the bedroom and the rest of this house would be non-affected mentally with work now every room is affected because I've created the sweet life based on all these different things to make it grow. And the asp the, but they're all little fractions of you. Mm -hmm. So which, which one is, is getting the biggest piece of that fraction pie right now? Is it, is it your health? Cause you said you had the health issues last year. Is it your um, garden that you're trying to grow or is it the business? And so forth, because I, gosh, they there's see. because you you concentrated last year so much, and you had to take the moment, you know, and thank God you're still here today for yeah, it. Yeah, you know that you took the moment and got better, and you worked on that. Then you had the pipes burst, you know, and and before that was the flood in the house, you know. So those took pieces of you. So now uh, you're able to have more more of the pie is no longer on the have to do's it's the want to do's yeah and that's fantastic yeah. that's that is that means that you as a person can grow more because you, the have to do's are always the things that str they're more stressful right they take um, a bigger toll on you and your family and and the ripples and so forth. Mm -hmm. When you when you get to concentrate on the want to dos, you're retired. Then you're then it you're happier. Like you're then the family. So the ripples on that are actually yeah. 
coming back and they, they come back to you again. Yeah. And because you're the center of the family. Uh, most, most women are, but you are wholeheartedly not just the family of your immediate blood family, but of us as well, yeah. you know, and so forth. You're the center. We all are drawn to you and we all, you know, the egg. I, I've been, I grew up as a farm girl and I didn't even know about the eggs. I know, and my so tomatoes funny. failed every year. And I thought, well, gosh darn, I'm letting my family down. Who's posting all these greenhouse photos. They, they've got all their botanicals, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, too sad little tomato plants. I don't even plant more because I can't ever get them to grow. And I thought I bought the right fertilizer and I thought I did the soil stack the the layering properly and I thought I positioned them in the sun properly and I thought and I thought and then you're like no it's all about calcium and I was like light bulb and mode. pinching you have to pinch. pinch and actually after we get done taping I'm gonna take mm -hmm. you out there and, and pinch I'm also gonna strip out some Brussels and so you've got stuff to feed the tortoise because you know I've got all this all the time out there mm -hmm. to pull and um and I'm gonna give you some collards too if you want them I've got a lot of yes. collards collards did real good with the storm with the freeze he um, likes he likes the greens, you know, the kale and all of that. He's yeah. He eats yeah. She's a lot. got a, a big, <laughs> big, big tortoise. He's about 80, 85 pounds now. Yeah, and he's big. He's as big as a car tire. Yeah, I have him in my head, McKenna. McKenna is like Eloise. She's got this perfect little wonderful life in this beautiful <laughs> home with this big ass tortoise that's like Eloise in that Manhattan apartment with her sweet little dog and it just I have, that's just my little picture if I was going to paint a watercolor painting of her it would be her sitting on a tortoise and the adventures that she would have which is what is a great segue to the other so years ago I wrote mm -hmm. a children's book and I sent it out to a bunch of people to publish and this was I was writing the columns at the time and I got rejected by everybody I mean everybody came back and was like oh no you're not Madonna you're not whoever cha 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 so we're not you know we, until you're famous whatever we're not going to publish you and so I let it go but I told B I said you know I'm it took me a long time to be able to say and be okay with the fact that the studio is going to be ex specifically only the people that I want to take mm -hmm. care of like it, it I am no longer advertising for photography clients I do not need or want new people to have to introduce myself to I've got my tribe my tribe and I are bonded mm -hmm. and and I'm at a point where I want to go back to painting I want to go back to cartooning and drawing and watercoloring and doing the things that I'm not leaving to go out to Mexico and stick my head with the fish but when I'm in that space it's the same space that I'm in when I'm there and so my promise to myself this year is to spend time create 10 paintings Mm -hmm. You know, I look over there in the hallway, that naked one that I, I always do naked people, for those of you that are not following my paintings, uh, for that, I think she's 2013 or 2015. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the signature of Autumn's got the numbers, but it's been a long time because it's oil and it's messy and I'm covered in it and I can't stop it and be covered in turpentine and then go hold a baby. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to dedicate the time. And when something snapped, it was like a couple of Sundays ago, you know, it was almost Easter it was a couple of Sundays ago and I had somebody scheduled for a photo shoot and they didn't show up. And I had offered them a Sunday. They were a brand new newborn. They were enamored by the work at the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, I stepped outside of my promise to myself and said, okay. And they didn't come and they didn't call and they didn't do anything. Oh no. Okay. And I, I had taken the whole morning to get stuff done and I really would have rather have been in the garden. Mm -hmm. And I said to somebody a long time ago, they're like, what do you love the most? Like, you know, you've probably asked me that question too. You know, photography or writing or what is your favorite thing that you do of all the things that you do? And at, uh, for a long time, it was photography. For a long time, it was photography. But something snapped this year. I like this. Mm -hmm. I like making the show. I like sharing what I know. I like being in the garden. I don't want to be in the studio on a Sunday afternoon when I could have my hands in the sand and soil and the butterflies and the fresh air and God mm -hmm. and making things grow. I mean, like it's not, and the people that are with me love me, right? Mm -hmm. yes. And don't want me to do that. They don't want me to take Sunday afternoon. And, no, and it should be for you and would, your family. Right, but so. the ones that did, I can now 
no longer serve. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put that nicely. You know, it's just, I, I've got a lot of perspective. I've gotten a lot of perspective in the last 12 months. You know, time that I spent, I told you on the clubhouse, if I look back and reflect, which I don't usually look back, like I just mm-hmm. don't. I mean, I just, I come from, you know, the trauma of mother getting killed and I don't spend a lot of time dwelling on things that happen. No, head, head I just first. moved that direction and that's why I survived very well when they said stay at home. I was already at home anyway. But then it was like, what am I gonna do? And then it was like, oh, I've got a backyard. Let's go plant some more stuff. I'm always planting stuff, but let's plant a lot of stuff. That'll keep me real busy. And then, and then sure, people call me, hey, how do you make that pickle jam? How do you make that whatever? And I'm like, oh, da, 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 da. oh, there's people that need me to help them do that. And that kind of, da, 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 da. and it's just God sort of led me along that path. But I said, if there was ever a day that I did not want to pick up the camera. If that ever came to me, if there was a day that it happened, mm-hmm. I woke up in the morning and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. If it's not bringing me joy, then I knew it would be time to quit. Mm-hmm. If there was ever a day that I got up and I said, I don't want to write a column anymore. I don't have anything else to share. I don't want to talk to you or for the channel, talk to you right. or you, then it's time to quit. And I think that people need to follow their heart. Mm-hmm. You know, because when you're not following your heart, you're not being true to yourself. And that's where the stress really comes into play. And that's why there's certain pieces of what I'm doing and have been offering to help because I was trying to help. It wasn't in my heart, not talking about photography, not talking about the channel, but other venues that Mm -hmm. I've done to help people. And when those things stress me out, I know it's time to shut the door. Yeah. It's just not, it's not my gig. It's not my time to do that. I'm not, I'm not helping you. I'm helping you. You think I'm helping you, but I'm not, I'm hurting me because it's, the cost is too great. Yeah. Anytime that and it's comes. just too, life's too short. You know, as I got B and James over here telling me, I need to just slow the hell on down. And if you want to go to Galveston and renovate some houses and start doing a reno company, You've talked about it for a long time. You were doing art has pre- historic preservation in mm-hmm. Savannah. You love art, architectural stuff. It's to someone who doesn't know me, they're like, "Holy crap, she's starting a whole other thing." Yeah. But for someone who does know me, they're like, "Well, yeah, that it's time for her to do that because art, art that you create and that you, through your paintings, through your photography, and architecture." They're very closely aligned, mm-hmm. especially when it's a historic house because they used to have all of the art. They call it the Art Deco era for a reason, but also so many eras throughout history yeah. for houses in the 1800s, 1900s, or the 30s, the 40s, the 50s. They all have their niche, but we lost that mm-hmm. when the 50s hit. We lost that. Houses being restored from the 50s are not, they don't have the cornices and, no. the, and the, the, the work, the woodwork and the millwork that you see on, on stuff now. It's, it's all chain. So restoring that, you know, is a fantastic way to be an avenue of your art. It's a different showcase. Well, I just took it one step further with the boys, but scared them half to death because you know me, I'm balls to the walls. It's like, there's two things I said in the past 60 days that both of them, their eyeballs got really big. The first one was, let's go to Galveston and let's renovate a whole bunch of really cool stuff and turn them into Airbnbs. And then I can decorate them. And then I can put my paintings in them. And then I can provide my food for them and we can have little gardens in the backs of them and 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 then they're like oh my god she's turning it into another business why can't we just what do you what it's just always what she does and then b was talking about like getting an rv and i and he wanted to like go around the country and immediately i said i want to have a food truck in the back and i want to have a cranked out awning in the front and i'll put a pink red carpet down and put a microphone on and i can be a road show in the RV Mm -hmm. and Brian was like no (laughs) you are not selling books you are not doing spying the RV would be great while you're renovating the house that you could live in the RV next to the house you're renovating if you need to stay overnight you know and be there for the pivotal points of a renovation because there are times when you're going to be there 10 eight ten hours a day yeah and you don't want to drive all the way back from Galveston but that RV would come real Real handy. handy (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but he was like, we are not touring the country for you to go on a road tour and start. 
But it's interesting because it's what I always do it. It's the entrepreneurial spirit. You can't take it mm-hmm. out of the person. And I don't know if I told you the story, but, and I know I haven't told the story for you guys that are watching because that, that story happens almost every day with a young entrepreneur that I'm talking to on mm-hmm. the phone. And I'm getting a lot of that now, which is why the coaching business is coming soon. That's really what I'm putting a lot mm-hmm. of energy in is because I feel like I have the degree in psychology and years of experience in business and people and how to take care of people mm-hmm. and how to maneuver sticky situations where people get upset, HR. Yes. Um, Put a happy just, face. Yes, cheese. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a natural thing for me to do. I don't know if it's because of me being able to navigate through negotiation uh, in parenting or with family members and some of them, you know, maybe not being able to move off of whatever they've locked down on mm-hmm. and growing through knowing how to just work with people. But um, I lost my train of thought because I missed my lunch today. <laughs> what was I going to tell you? I was telling you about... You were going to tell me a story... About. Oh, no, I've lost it again. I'm going to have to have food. What was I going to tell you that comes up with every single entrepreneur? Jeez, I'm having an Alzheimer's moment. Oh, I know exactly what it is. So, there's a story. I'm going to reset it. There's a story that comes up a lot whenever I'm talking to other people and I haven't shared it before on the channel but when I graduated from University of Houston I had a degree in psychology Mm -hmm. pre-law and my father was like this gung-ho every child has to get a degree and every child has to go get a job right he had no clue about this entrepreneurial stuff going Mm -hmm. on that was just not even in his DNA it might have been but he never opened the door to opportunity Mm -hmm. for it to be there and I had to go down to some little headhunter in 1960, which is where Brian and I lived at the time, and take a gazillion t- little tests. I mean, she oh, had I put me those. through the whole hoo-ha. And she came out with a stack, and she said, I'm just sorry, but I can't hire you. You're not employable. You're an entrepreneur. You're, you've tested too high on this, too high on that. I, I'm not going to be able to put you anywhere in corporate America you have to go home and figure out what you would do for free and love to do and start a company and do it. And Mm -hmm. I remember calling daddy and he was so mad because he had put in his head that I was going to be a lawyer and, and I had made the great grades. Like it wasn't like, Mm -hmm. but she did me the best service. I don't even know who she is or who she's not even still alive anymore because it's been forever uh, since that happened. But if people would figure out, which is what my mission is kind of right now, I want to be able to help people understand that there are people that are like me. Mm-hmm. Like, we look to the world uh, as a very strange bird. My publicist for years has just been like beside herself. How do I even put you in a box? I can't. You're a photographer. You're a writer. You're this. You're that. Yes. Switch gears on you, and you turn into another. Da, 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 mm-hmm. da. Switch gears again, and you turn into another. Da, 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 da. You're not. You cannot put you in a. You can't. And you're a for, cloud. It's hard for people to understand. You, your shape is ever changing. Yeah, and so, but the fact that she recognized it mm-hmm. because she could have put me in a job that I would have excelled in, and I would have hated. And I would not have been one of those sitting at the water cooler being crappy to each other and talking about right. gossipy stuff. That's not my style. That's not who I am. But I would have to have lived in that infestation of a miniature micro of what was high school. Yes, right? it is. Which is what I feel like when my sister tells me about corporate America, mm-hmm. when you tell me about corporate America, when my other family members tell me about corporate America. I haven't had anybody ever sit down with me or talk to me on the phone and say, I just love corporate America. <laughs> that is the best place to work. I don't think you are going to have anybody tell you that. I just think it's so much fun, and I just can't wait. To do... No, they're wanting to be retired. Mm-hmm. Or where can I move to someplace else? There's not anybody. But you talk to an entrepreneur, I mean, a true, spirited person who is driven by their own mm-hmm. What's the next? What's the next? What's the next thing? Whether it makes money or not, you're just driven. And it's not schizophrenic driven. It's just freaking driven Mm -hmm. to do something. And for me, it was give back to the community, you know, make a difference, do the breast cancer calendars, leave a legacy. And then here's the next thing. And here's the next thing. And I just feel like this whole YouTube, me, you, Martini Talks, Clubhouse, 
whatever, there's this new way for me of finding those people and helping those people understand and connect to who they are because they're not, there's not people around that understand them. Fine. Being, being a mentor is not for everyone. Being a coach and mentor is not for everyone because I feel like mentors are uh, specific to job. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you're my mentor in business. You're my mentor in X or Y. But a coach is, is you can plug and play. Right. You're, you're coaching based on, and it could be anything. It could be the art. It could be the garden. It could be this. So you're both. You have the expertise in the areas, but you have the base of guidance to coach. So you're not just coaching or mentoring the person in one thing. You're not mentoring, okay, well, this is one little avenue. This mm -hmm. is how you do it. You're also coaching them in their life on how to achieve all of it, the personal you know, be the happier person, do the want to do's, not the have to do's mm -hmm. and find that for themselves. They're not synonymous. They're not one in the same coaching and mentoring are not mm -hmm. a lot of times people think they, they get are, confused, but they're not. And you have both skills that is invaluable to sharing your knowledge base because people, you know, they can say, this is how you do a trial and I'm going to mention you. This is the questions you want to ask. This is, you know, this, that, and the other. Um, and this is how you do it exactly step by step by step by step. Okay. Well, you just gave me a guideline mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I'm mentoring you in how to, you know, go to trial and ask questions. So you're coaching them to have the confidence to do that. So you're doing both. Mm -hmm. You're saying these are the steps and this is the best way to achieve it, but you can do it and you have to find your inner drive. You have to find your inner strength or you have to find your inner peace or you have to, whatever, whatever it is that you, that person is, is lacking or doesn't have enough of, mm -hmm. you're coaching them to have it so they can be successful in the steps that you're giving. That's powerful. That is a powerful thing because in HR, you, you see people who make it to manager levels and you're like, oh boy, they really, yeah, and that's the next succession level. This is the level they're at. But you're like, you're not a people person. You're just, you're not a people person, yeah. you know, yeah. but you've made it to that level yeah. where you, you have to have people, you have people under you, but you're like, bless your heart. You're, you're just miserable. Not, yeah. You're just not a people person and everybody knows it and everybody under you feels it and so forth. And you, and you see that that's not a good place to be. <laughs> it's, no, it's not. No. So I see where you have that both abilities to mentor and to coach. And because you are truly a people person, but you have it not just because of your degree, that probably honed your skills. Mm -hmm. I think that's just how you are because people can learn a skill, but they don't love the skill. Right. I think you love the skill. You love that people aspect. You love, I made it to here, my hands down. I'm bringing you up right with me. Right. I shouldn't be the only one up here. If you want to be up here with me, I'm going to help you. And a lot of people don't have that in them. They're like, well, I made it up here and it's all great. And nobody else should get up here. Yeah. And, and, and so that's so silly. That's in you. That's it's silly. It's you. not sincere. It's not right. It's not the way we should be. Um, it's just not. I mean, like, you know, and thankfully I've been able to be successful enough to be able to say, you know what? I can start teaching you for less than 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. You know, and I can also say to you after you, you know, invested the time and the energy and show me that you're really going to, and we've got a business that we've built together, not my business. I've grown your business for you with you, helping you do it. You're mm -hmm. doing it. I'm not doing it. You're doing it. I already have mine built, right? Mm -hmm. That you can always tap into that because there's always a need to have someone who's been there and done that before you. And I talked to a guy just yesterday, Stacy, just yesterday, called me up out of the blue on LinkedIn knows me has been reading the column, you know, 
knows about the photography, uh, didn't know about the real estate or the travel, doesn't matter, none of that matters. And he said, I've started a new business with my wife and I've never left corporate America and I'm scared to death and I'm out flying without a net. And, and I, I just was cracking up the whole concept of his head of flying without a net. I'm like, I don't even understand how to not fly. I don't even fly with a net. I don't fly with a net. I've never flown with a net. You don't get on the airplane with a parachute. I don't understand the concept of flying with any net at Mm -hmm. all, but he's been in the netville for 25 years, right? Plus, probably. I mean, he's our age and he's been let go. And he's like, what now? And I'm like, because he's not ready to retire. I mean, and quite frankly, I'm not ready to retire. Right. <laughs> okay. I don't want to retire ever, actually. If you ever hear me say the words, I'm retired, you need to call quickly the doctor. <laughs> yes. Because if you ever have me tell you I'm retired, uh, I'm very sick. I mean, like at death's door sick. Mm-hmm. Because even on the best of days where I've not got one thing in the world that I have to do, which is never... Mm-hmm. And it's all self-imposed, according to the boys, which is true to a certain extent. Yes, right? but it, that's your drive. I have to have accomplishment. It doesn't have to be much. Some days it can be nothing more than putting a mask on, shaving my legs, watering the garden, and reading two hours of some fabulous book. Mm-hmm. But I made the commitment to do this, 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 and checked it off my list, right? But I was sharing with him, like, first off, you have to get out of your head that you're flying without a net. You're flying. Okay, you're going to fly. You just your have to experience keep is going. Your net. Yeah, and you don't need to worry about that. But there's this idea in the world of employee or corporate or whatever, even daddy as a doctor, that you have a job and then you have a home life and then you look to the sky for your retirement. And that's when you're going to be happy. It's way over here somewhere. Well, it didn't happen for dad. I mean, he had heart disease and diabetes and had to forcibly retire. He loved delivering babies. He loved getting people pregnant. He did the reproductive endocrinology. He loved it, loved it. That was Mm -hmm. who he was. When he came home, he had five kids screaming and yelling in five different directions. That was not a wonderful, fun, (laughs) loving home life. That was a bunch of craziness, right? And he always wanted to paint. And every year he buys paints and he buys easels and he buys all this stuff. And then he wouldn't paint. And when we had the pipes break, we found in the attic over the studio, like four or five paintings that he had done that got put in the attic when we moved here because I was huge pregnant and they were just trying to get the house Mm -hmm. moved from A to B. And then they found my paintings from my first art show at St. Mary's and they're in the studio. And I'm going to do a little segment for you guys to see the paintings, which is surprising to me that they've made it this long because I mean, it's been a long, long time. But I said, you know what, I'm not going to spend my, I'm not going to be 65 or he died at 64. I'm not going to be 85. I'm not going to be 95 and not have a big room full of canvases like Van Gogh and Matisse. I had always always a painter, but I Mm -hmm. haven't painted. But I told him, this other man, this entrepreneur, this young man, I said, you have to do two things. You have to understand that as an entrepreneur, you're doing a lot of things. And if you're not good at multitasking, and thankfully his wife is with him on it, which is a blessing. Yes. It's not in disguise. It is a blessing. If people are married to themselves, to each other, and to a business that they've grown together, their marriages will last. Mm -hmm. That is 95% of the reason why people stay married. We are 50-50 partners in life. We are 50-50 partners in business. We have things to talk about at night. Mm-hmm. When we're having a martini and we're watching TV, it's the same things. It's the cooking, it's the gardening, it's the guitar. We take turns with mm-hmm. who gets to whatever interest because we're all interested because we love each other and it's co. We can mm-hmm. have conversation at dinner about the business and not look at each other because we don't know each other's businesses and we don't have a clue what each other does each day at work because and we're. You get, I'm fine. And there's yeah, nothing. Okay. It's like good. The, yeah. I like, mean, it's just. That's the answer they get. Yeah. Cause, because no one's willing to really open themselves up. And though, even though you're family, and not It's too share. much work. It's like I've spent the whole day dealing with this bull crap at, at work. Now I don't really want to sit here at the dinner table and rehash that out to my husband or my wife. I just want to have a drink and pff, let's just move on. Mm-hmm. But the knowing of what's going on because you're both in the same business together is what glues the people mm-hmm. more, I think. 
anyway, I explained that to him. The other thing I explained to him, I said, in the midst of you doing all these things that you have to do as an entrepreneur, you have to make sure that you take time to do something different that takes you into the space that you originally asked me when we started Martini Talks, which is where do you find that mm -hmm. sacred space? Because you have to fill yourself back up. Entrepreneurship takes everything out. I mean, it does. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a full. I don't. You don't stop. You don't no, stop. No, you're always on. It's you're, not. It's not. It's a twenty four seven because you're probably you know when you start a new business, even though you're you're very good at it, you probably have a checklist that's a mile long. That when you your head hits the pillow, you're like, check. Okay, maybe and then tomorrow and then next week I need to. And your checklist is going. Yeah. You don't. Oh, I worked. I left work. I'm home now. I'm home, and and the paycheck's going to show up from some magic, magic little doodah, mm -hmm. direct deposited into the checking account, and then at and the end of the day, the health insurance is also in there somewhere. Like that whole concept. When my sister starts to have a conversation with me about tax returns, and I'm writing checks, and she's wanting to get checks, I it just makes my yeah. blood. Boy, I write checks too. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, hey, how big of the check is it going to be this year? When she starts talking about profit sharing and raises and bonuses, I just want to turn into like a wicked witch of the West. Because <laughs> I'm like, it's so much harder what I do. And then, and then, but the thing coupled with the idea, oh, well, you work from home, so you don't really work. And you oh, are, but all the know, studies during this COVID is people who oh, well, work from home work longer and they're more productive because they don't have the distractions of other people and other things that stop them from doing what they are focused on. And I know a lot of people during this COVID time have said, oh, well, you know, and the concept before was, well, if you're, you're doing so many things at home. Because you're home and you can run a load of laundry on a Monday, it takes you no time to put it in, pour the liquid. You know, it's simple instead of, oh, I've got four All loads of this to do. on the weekend. And that's if you're... That's a half a day. Yeah. You've got four to 10 loads. It's a, it's a half a day. So your time off is you now can do, oh, I took five minutes to do that. I took five minutes to do that. So you're actually working more hours where if somebody was like oh yeah so this weekend my kids birthday party and you listen to 30 minutes of them going on about how their weekend was or there's a group of you and you're all talking and feeding and that leads into 45 minutes and then you talk to somebody at lunch and then you're doing this and you took an hour lunch you're not taking so when you work at home you don't take that i get an hour break and i'm gonna just eat or I'm going to go over here and we're gibby gabbing about what are you doing this weekend or what did you do last night or I my sister's having a baby and blah 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 blah, yeah. blah or whatever and you just you the, all the chit chat and all the distractions and all of that it's gone it's gone and what's funny is that all these years you know 22 years of being in business as a photographer people would come you included I'm sure had the thought I don't remember you ever articulating it to me but people would come and they're like, how do you get all this crap done? How are you like, they, you know, you see me twice a year and you're downloading mm -hmm. me what you're doing. We see the kids, we're photographing the kids. We're talking about what we're doing in each other's lives. Sometimes we're meeting for lunch in the middle of all that, mm -hmm. whatever. You're coming to the parties when we had them, whatever. But it's like, you know, oh, she's doing this and she's doing this and she's launched this. And she's, you know how I was able to do all that and how I'm still able to do all that? I work from home. I have not sat in traffic. I don't go to an office. I don't, exactly. I don't waste time doing that. Plus, I've had the privilege of having somebody be with me, live with me, take care of the domestic things because mm -hmm. I don't believe that by the virtue of having the vagina, I should be the one that has to do the laundry and all of the crap. <laughs> like, I don't believe that. That, Amen, that to me, but, bothers yeah. me to an, an extent that to which it just doesn't even, I can't even, that's a whole nother six month segmented series on the placement of women in our society. I mean, I could really go yes. off on that, but I mean, and you'd have all the studies to back it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and it just, but to me, I just feel like during COVID for sure, people, my sister was complaining. My friends were complaining. They didn't want to homeschool. They didn't like having to sit there with the kids. I'm like, I've homeschooled. 
and run a company from home. Everything that you're bitching about, screaming and yelling about, your life has changed up upside down, is the lifestyle that we chose. I chose it. Mm-hmm. I put my kids in school three days a week and homeschooled them the other two. I've got children that are well-rounded and they understand Shakespeare and they understand you know, stuff, the world. It's not just about the math, the science, and whatever the state of Texas wants them to pass the test. test. It doesn't exist. We didn't have that mentality. But it's a lot more work. Oh, wholeheartedly. And it's interesting because it's like, okay. And then my friend, Dr. Briley, has a book on cake or crumbles in your marriage. And she's on, you know, you know, we met her. And, you know, people are having affairs on Facebook. Yeah. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's like people were like married, but they're not really in love. They have children, but they don't really want to parent them or school them or be a part of school. Every day that James Edward comes home, I ask him, how was your school day? What did you talk about? I want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you're learning. I want to know what you're dissecting in anatomy and physiology. I want to know how that felt, had that smell. What did Mm -hmm. you think about it? A conversation human to human, not texting, you know. And if I can do that. Engagement. Yeah. And this is huge in HR as well. Engagement. Engaging employees. Engaging your family. Because most of the time... You, people use bait, whether it's family or with corporate America, use bait. I'll give you this if you do this. Mm. You don't get the person to do it because they want to do it. They're doing it for something else. You're engaging your child. You're, you're giving him uh, your time. Yeah. You're, you are listening and hearing and you want him to do the same for you which provides a huge bond for the two of you but it also sets him off to be more successful in life because he's had to learn that you can't just and kitten this is very this is not our generation this is their generation right. you can't just go to the computer and to the phone and to the ipad and be in that world in that zone or the video game you actually do have to talk to other people and they do expect real answers from you most of the time there are the people you say oh yeah everything's great and it's fine because you don't engage that person no you people that you engage you want to know the information and you want an exchange so you're setting him off to be more successful in life because he's he's been engaged in your life for the business and seeing you how hard you work here at the home because he had that opportunity. He's never done anything different. Yeah, he knows that it's a 24, he knows that it's working, working, working and it's doing, doing, doing for family and for business. You set him off and he's got a leg up where everybody else, you know, my, my kids included, they go to school, they come home and you try to engage them. And I, you know, we all do the best, but when you coming home from corporate America, yeah, your you're tired too. Home, you know, this Everybody's and the other, tired. and you haven't seen each other since, you know, the 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Okay, get up and get, get to school and get your stuff packed and get your bags and get da, 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 and off. And then you come back and everybody's just like, we survived. Oh, we've, <laughs> yeah, we've man, survived. Is it Friday yet? Is it Friday yet? Yeah. <laughs> you know, today's Friday Eve. You know that they're now calling it because they need that break. They got the break being home two days a week, and they got to you engage them in their lives. You made what you did is important to me. Yeah, and a lot of people don't. They're like, oh, I had a designer show up in this house and walk in my kitchen and see that I had decorated the entire center section around the top Mm -hmm. with their paintings, one right after the other. And she actually said to me, I was to put her on the cover of a magazine. It's been years ago. She walked in my home in front of me and had the audacity to say, all of this needs to go. And I was like, I'm very diff- I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be difficult, but I did not ask for any interior design help. <laughs> and the art in my home is the art that I create or my children have created. And this honors them. The fact that they are in this kitchen and we are eating in this kitchen as a family they see these on the walls. That means that mom found value in that. Mm-hmm. Put that there to see, to share, to look at, because it means something to us as mm-hmm. a family. It's not thrown in the drawer and you get somebody to bring in some weird piece of art that no one knows who made it. No, every single thing in this house 
we've created yeah. and it's our home and how dare you <laughs> you know was just like blown away at the audacity of mm -hmm. that but you know it's making priority on what it is that they're doing and sometimes it's not easy because when they go through that weird 12 13 14 16 it's a rocky ride and God gives you what you can handle <laughs> and he gave me a lot and I'm thankfully through it the other side, <laughs> I'm on the back side of and, that and little. I started over I started over so yeah. I, I went I, I have older children and I have I my six-year-old we have so our I precious have angel whole, uh, the age span between my oldest and my youngest is 21 years yeah so I I'm gonna go through that again yeah I made it through with the boys and now I've got this my, is the my one that I'm gonna be right there holding your hand because the <laughs> girls are I'm gonna tell you for those of you who are parents you know what I'm saying I I was a handful my sister was a handful my brothers were not as bad of mm -hmm. a handful they all did their own thing like I am here to tell you that it is easier to raise boys than it is to raise girls. I have a degree in psychology. I will write a book if you need me to and have it published <laughs> to make sure it's in the world that I said that. I believe that. I know there are boys that are bad and do bad things and get caught up in things. But it, from my experience, mm -hmm. it has been a beautiful experience to parent both the children, but a very different experience. Mm -hmm. They're not the same. And so that's a whole nother conversation for a different day too, right. because girls are not like boys and boys are not like girls and they're completely different. But um, it's, it's just another challenge. But I think that people have figured out now, and there's another thing that was just on the news last night, somebody, I don't know if it's JP Morgan Chase or somebody in corporate America is now saying that they have to have no Zooms on Fridays. They want to encourage people to take vacations because people are working more than they were mm -hmm. and are stressed out more than they were because they have not figured out the balance of working from home. And they are expected to work mm -hmm. more because the employer knows that if they don't have the time in the traffic, that's another hour on the top and an hour on the bottom that yes. they could be made available. Mm -hmm. Not that they should be, but they could be made yes. available. And that's the next thing that we're going to see as a but stressor. But also, and this has happened to many, many of my friends, especially in the oil and gas industry, four people used to do the job, and now two of them are doing it. Okay. And so, now that the, one of them is my friend, and he, he's, he's like, yeah, you know, you look back and you're like, four people did this job. And you think, did you need four people? And he's like, yes, we did. Minimum three, but four was optimal because we all had a life. With two, we're both now it's now it's a like you said now you're working a, a lot more because you're you've taken had to take responsibilities because those people are no longer there but it's the same amount of work that still needs to be done right but it's now being done by two people instead of four four people but the people are home so they have don't have that hour commute each way or they don't have that lunch hour anymore they can sit at the computer at home and just you know eat their soup or right. a sandwich right one-handed while you're clicking on the mouse yeah you know, and still work and so they're working a lot more mm -hmm. hours and a lot harder yeah and i just told the guy the, the new entrepreneur i said you I, and he was shocked because i don't think anybody has treated him that way and that's what i've tried to at least I didn't intend to, because you and I were just going to talk. I mean, hopefully it's come through and conveyed through this interview. But you've really interviewed me, which is really kind of cool, because <laughs> I don't know if you did that on purpose or not, but I'm glad if you did do it on purpose, yeah, then that's cool. Um, but that anything he needed, he could call me. Mm -hmm. If he needed any help with anything, he could call me. He could call me, and if I was busy, I would just text him, and I could not answer, but I would get back to him mm -hmm. because it is a hard thing to do and a scary thing for someone who's been in corporate America for so long. And and he was just almost in tears. I mean, it was just you could feel it in the phone that he was just almost in tears. And it was then when I knew. I was like, the next thing that I'm called to do, right, mm -hmm. I'm called to do it. It's like the Holy Spirit has a little voice right. in my brain you have a degree in psychology. You've been writing all these things for years. You've been showing people how to live a sweet life. This is now your calling. You need to teach people. Show them the way. Yes. 
And every time that I hear that, I just know that that's what this is. That's what this is. It's not, it's not me. I'm going to take time this yeah. go round to paint. You should. <laughs> I'm going to breathe and paint. But this, what has happened to me with this whole thing, the channel and the garden mm -hmm. and all that stuff, all of it has been the calling. I've been called to give to the community, help entrepreneurs figure out what to do. And I see it as a ministry. I mean, I see it as a calling. It is. It is. You know, I don't see it as a business. I see it as I'm, they make fun of me, the boys. Like, when are we going to open up the church of Elisa or the church <laughs> of NTA? You know, and when I did all the mm -hmm. scriptures for the ornaments for the advent, they were like, oh, dear God, she's reading the Bible now. What's happening here to us? And I was like, I need it to be made clear to the world. There's mm -hmm. a specific centrical thing that runs through me. If you tried to box it up, it's like Mr. Rogers and Martha Stewart and Joel Olstein. It's like these four, these forces that are all sweet mm -hmm. and all giving. And there's people that need that help. But what was key, you, when you told him you'd be there for him, you became his safety net that he said he had to have. Uh -huh. That almost puts me in tears. I didn't even know that. That's crazy. That's because crazy. he's not in it alone. Him and his wife are doing this by themselves. Yeah. But the minute you said, I'm going to be here every step of the yeah. way. And when you need something, yeah. I am here. You became that net. That's crazy. You didn't realize that? No. <laughs> that's why. That's crazy. Well, and I'm glad to be of service. I really am. I mean, that's the bottom line. I've always been that way. People don't understand that, that don't understand that. But mm -hmm. people that understand that, understand that perfectly. And you picked it right up. You're almost <laughs> crying over there yourself. No, That's I know. terrible. We're crying on martini <laughs> toss. We need and we vodka. don't even have martinis. We need the poor vodka. <laughs> no, I'm like, we don't need, we have water I'm sitting here and, and so Pepsi, I'm sitting here, yeah. Crazy. So, what a revelation. Well, with that, we're done. Yes. <laughs> okay. We love you. <laughs> if you didn't find any nuggets in this video and interview, then we don't know what, how to help you. <laughs> really, that's the bottom line and right. God's honest truth. I mean, that's really the God's honest truth. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you found any value, please do me a favor and like and share and ring the bell. And Stacy, thank you just for being my my best, one of my very best friends. I just, I love you. I love I you adore too. You so much. At some point when all me. this crapple is over, we ought to take off and go. I have, it has to be with Neil and B though. Cause you know, I don't go anywhere without B, but we can go to the beach. Well, uh, it's gotta be with McKenna too. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, McKenna's going to want James Everett to go. And that's a conversation for a whole nother martini talk. So. We, we, that's another business matchmaking. She's got, going. Oh, I just would love, we talked about that just on I Sunday. Know. So anyway, we got to go. We'll see you soon on the channel. Take care. Take care. Bye.